Okay, so I'm working on this Baby Lock Evolve Serger. Problem here is the uh, the threader, the air threading wasn't working uh, on two of these uh, ports. So I I fixed it, but I took it apart for to clean it and stuff. And I just wanted to show you how it works and how to fix it when those ports don't work. So um, the way the machine works is these are the three ports. You have the, uh, obviously the chain stitch looper goes in this hole and it, and it moves the air, the, uh, lower looper and the upper looper. And you just get the different ones by sliding this over. And the way this works is the, let's say you put it in the chain stitch looper. Well, what it does is it moves a little compartment over to the chain stitch looper um, port. And when you pump the air, there's inside of the machine, you can't really see it, but there's a, uh, a little um, diaphragm air thing inside of there. You can see the tube goes from this little box underneath here around and into the diaphragm area. And what that does is it it pushes, when you push this down, it forces air from the diaphragm through this tube, and then it routes it to whichever looper you're pushing air through. There's a little gap in there, so it when you stick the thread, let's see, let me grab some thread here on the machine. So when you take the thread and you, right now I've got it set for chain. Well, before I do that, I want to show you the rest of it. So the, each port, the chain stitch looper, the, uh, I'm sorry, the <laughs> lower looper and then the upper looper um, have little steel um, tubes that go to from there to here, they terminate right here, and the other two terminate here and here. So these tubes, they go up inside of here, and they go all the way up, almost to the um, to the uh, um, top, the little um, round things here, the ports. But there's a little space in there so the air can push, and so when you push your uh, thread in through there, it will actually force it. We'll do it real quick. It, it can do it without it being clicked over. Now this isn't gonna thread the looper, but it's gonna show you how it works. And whoops, I'm trying to do this while I'm, <laughs> while I'm filming. I'm not, I'm, filming isn't my uh, forte, but let's set this over for chain stitch looper. And then we'll take about a couple centimeters of, uh, red here. We're just going to push it in here. Be patient with me. I'm trying to do this. I'm looking through my phone. so And you put it in there a little bit. And then when you pump this, you can see it moved all by itself. It just pushed that thread through there. And it pops out on the other side. So there it is coming out. Um, here, I'll, I'll do a little bit more here. And it's stuck. There we go. So we'll go and it pushes it out like that. So when you have the machine, when you're using the machine and you have it all clicked over, you turn the hand wheel while you're pushing this in and it will actually, these things will click in place and boom, they're spring loaded and they will spring load and connect these rods, these uh, tubes with the tubes of the loopers. So the, the um, upper looper, if we disconnect this, you can see that the, it goes into there, hits into this tube here, which follows it up um, through the back. I picked the hard one to see. We'll take this one, the chain stitch looper. This links this tube up with this tube, which goes around the looper and pushes it out. 
Now, typically, if you have a um, if you have a clog where it doesn't um, push the threads through, that means there's there's a tiny little bit of debris. It doesn't take much, just a little bit of uh, thread, a little bit of lint. Um, whatever you do, don't force it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is to try each one. Oh, whatever you do, do not turn those two screws. You will regret it because then the whole piece here with all its parts falls apart and it's, you're going to have to put it all back together and you got to know how to do it. So don't take those two screws out. Um, so what you want to do is start with the upper looper and disconnect it and just stick your thread in there and see if it pops out. If it pops out of all three of these, then the problem is on this side. One of these tubes is clogged. If this one works and this one works, but that one doesn't, then you know that this tube is clogged somewhere between here and there. If they all three of these work, then concentrate on these and figure out which ones are not working. So if, if all three of these work, then push your thing in, get them clicked into place, boom, you're in, and then try all three of them. If this one works and this one works and this one doesn't, then you know it's just this back tube or this front tube, whichever one isn't working. So then how you fix that, the easy way to do it is disconnect this and you'll see that when you rotate your hand wheel, this port here sticks straight up and it's accessible. Now, how I do it is really, I, I have a, I always follow Occam's razor. The simplest method is probably the best. And this cocktail straw works great. Um, what I do, is, and I don't take all the don't take all the covers off. I would not recommend taking all these covers off. It's unnecessary, and you're just going to have to put everything back together. And you might leave stuff off. You might break it. You won't know how the little thread guide thing up here fits. It's just I would not recommend taking it off. But what I do is I just it's it's kind of uh, uh, pre uh, I don't know Neanderthal, but um, I put this little cocktail napkin in here and I just. Use my mouth. It's not like it's going to kill me to little, have a little lint. I mean, a tiny, tiny bit. And just suck in and out real fast and try to just feel if it's clogged really bad, which I, I've never encountered one. It's usually something really light. It'll generally come out. Um, the same goes with the chain stitch looper. If it's doing it, it's a little trickier because the chain stitch looper, you're going to have to go from the downside as it as it goes down and this thing is not in the way you you can do this with the covers off and you can get this little you can bend these things around to get it in there and then just do the same thing the upper looper is a little tougher because it's um hard to get to um actually this one is is actually pretty easy also and it fits in there like that and just in and out and in and out and you'll probably um you won't if there was a little bit of lint in there you might even not even feel it because it's just really slight it doesn't take much whatever you do don't put wires and and um uh, pipe cleaners in there these these tubes are highly polished and you really don't want to scratch them up so just use the air to do that and i bet you anything just doing those simple things will unclog it. Now, if it so happens that it is this side, then you have to do exactly the same thing. So you, what you have to do is come from the side here and you've got to get these. Uh, it's a little tricky with these. You gotta get, and I'm trying to do this through my phone. See, I can get it on there like that. And you'll have to do your air thing over here but make sure that you put it in the, uh, well, actually it doesn't, uh, you should probably put it in the, in whatever. You can try it both on and off and go both directions to, to make sure that it's clear. And after you do it, if this is the one that fails, 
try this little sucking in and out method and then just put a piece of thread in there click it over and and uh, try to get your stuff to go through you can also test it another way you can take a piece of thread here just a real just a little piece of thread grab a couple centimeters of it i'm trying to see this here and hold it in front of the port like that in front of it and then blow it with the air see how it moves you can tell it's working because it's pushing it out of the way so i move it over to the upper looper i can put it in front of that thing see well I, i'm not sure where there we go you can see it moving <laughs> I can't hold it because, there we go. And then the chain stitch looper, same thing. So you can test it that way. Yeah, there we go. And it's hard for me to film and do this at the same time, but there we go. So once you get those cleaned, that's all you need to do. Now this particular one, I did that with this, uh, this upper looper and it still was clogged. So what I did, last resort, and very carefully, I used, uh, this is um, floral wire. It's not your regular wire. It's super, eh, it's super thin. I mean, it is tiny, really, really thin wire. And I just uh, cut myself a little piece. Where did I put it? Um, here, let me just cut another piece here. Oops, something on my side cutters. What I did is I took this little wire and I would probably take a little bit of sandpaper. Um, I have some uh, 2400 grit sandpaper and just, you can, this is 400 grit, but you can just make, take off any rough edges because you really don't want it to be sharp. And I literally poked it in this hole about Oh my gosh, maybe one to th three millimeters. It wasn't very much, just a little bit. And it immediately cleared it out. Don't stick it in there and shove it in there and poke around inside that hole. You really don't want to do that because that wire when it's cut is really sharp. And I would hesitate to use anything. You could even use a very tiny piece of wood but you want to make sure that it doesn't leave any chunks back in there. You don't want anything to get stuck in there because if you have to take this thing all apart, it's a real pain in the neck. I've, I've taken them out, but it's, it's not, I would not recommend it. And you just make, you dig a hole deeper than you already were when you, when you mess around with it. So 99 times out of a hundred, it's probably just going to easily come out with a little bit of air. And uh, then you can just go back, you, you put your doors shut and go. You don't even have to take anything apart. So um, that's basically how the um, Baby Lock air threaders work. They're, they're all about the same. And uh, make sure that when you uh, clean this machine, if you ever do any cleaning with it, be sure to push this in and then click it into place as if you were going to thread it. And then you can brush this stuff out and clean the things out that you want. Vacuum it out. If you don't have all the covers and shells off, I highly recommend not using an air compressor because these things get really dust linty and um, a lot of stuff in there. But as everything's moving real fast, the lint tends to catch in, on things like this spring and on the wall over here and there's little crevices and things like that. The moving parts kind of clear the way for themselves. But if you just blow the lint around when you have all the covers off, it puts it in places that you don't want it to be. And if this thing is clicked shut, I mean, if this, these ports are open, you're vulnerable to the debris and lint and little, a little tiny piece of thread that can get lodged in there and then you've created another problem instead of solving a problem. So that's basically the, the gist of the Baby Lock uh, air threading system.